It's expected in a matter of hours the UK is going to have a new Labor government after 14 years of Conservative rule. Let's bring in financial entrepreneur and geopolitics expert Dr Roger Gewob. Roger, great to speak with you again. What does a Labor victory mean for the UK? Uh, people, uh, many people are pretty bleak about it. It means uh, they are saying uh, open borders, tons more immigration, higher taxes, as is always the case with labor. They say um, uh, more wokeism. Uh, it, it's incredible that we Brexited uh, four years ago to get away from lefty, woke, uh, rigid, uh, nonsensical policies as they were seen and now europe has moved to the right and are acting like brexiteers uh with that with actually talk of some european countries actually exiting the eu now uh whereas england is uh, britain is uh, the uk is heading towards total wokeism and a uh a, a society that is just unrecognizable from you know what traditional Britain and its values have been. Why do you think that is? Um, poor leadership, basically. We've just had terrible leaders on both sides, uh, and we still do. We have people who just are are you know not leaders. They are they are managers and and not necessarily very good managers. And I think that. I would personally say that Labour's victory, if indeed it is a landslide, and that's not 100% certain yet, uh, I can come back to that if you want, but I mean, I think that Labour's victory is more than anything a function of how angry people are at the Conservative Party, uh, because the politicians who've led that party, especially recently, have... have, have uh, manipulated, gaslighted, demeaned, mistreated over and over the public uh, that elected them. They've been wholly irresponsible to the British electorate and they aren't conservatives. They're as close to labor as you can get. So Gabriella, uh, uh, much of the media refers to them as the uni party. They don't even call them two parties anymore. Let's talk about Rishi Sunak. It's hard to find an article where he's being praised. Almost all of them, he's being pretty harshly criticised. What would you say his legacy will be? Uh, probably one of the worst prime ministers and worst political leaders in a very long time. Um, somebody who is just, despite all his photo opportunities, rolling up his sleeves and trying to be uh, one of the lads, somebody who's just so out of touch with the country and its people, mm. he puts on a good he puts on a good act um, of being, you know, a man of the people. But his actions just belie that every time. Well, look, that's. Um tough but I'm sure I'm tough but fair. Let's talk about some of the issues with this election. Cost of living is a big one. How would a Starmer government balance social spending and, and also the issue of inflation? Um, I think if they were going to do something about the cost, it's, it's very puzzling. If they were going to do something about the cost of living, um, if they were going to do something about inflation, if they were going to do something about interest rates that don't need to be as high as they are, you would have thought that they would have used that to beat the Tories over the head any time in recent years. But I mean, they've really been very silent about it all. They've talked about other things, if they've talked at all. I mean, they basically played a game, uh, labor, which obviously is a strategic game, where they haven't really come out with what their policies are or what their plans are, to the point that they've been criticized for being something of a, an empty vessel and have no plans and no ideas and no clue what they're going to do if they got into power after so long. But I mean, I think the game that they're playing is, you know, if you, if you don't put something out there, then people aren't going to be able to shoot at it. So it's mm. hard to tell, it's hard to tell what they will do, but I would imagine they will not reverse uh, the Tory policies on interest rates, uh, uh, inflation, and pretty much 
all the rest. They will simply uh, raise taxes, especially to fund all sorts of uh, climate change and other now kind of out of vogue issues. They'll bring those back and, uh, you know, everything pretty woke and, and pretty left wing they will fund and they'll just print money. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think Labor is ever worried about that. What about foreign policy? And also, how would a Starmer-led Labor government deal with the anti-Israel marches that we've seen erupting at pro-Palestinian university encampments, uh, also quite severe criminal attacks on, on Jewish businesses? How do you see this changing? Will, will, the, uh, will the UK change its support of Israel? Yes, I think they probably will, despite uh, their protestations uh, otherwise. Um, I think it will not be good for Jews and not be good for Muslims because, you know, uh, Muslims are suffering from uh, Islamophobia from the ordinary, you know, sort of white British bloke in the street who's not very happy with the protests. And uh, I know Muslims who tell me they go out and they get glared at now by, by British people, even though they're British themselves, and uh, they don't like it either. I think it won't be very good for uh, race relations, but they will, I think, keep the borders open to more and more people coming from countries for what they can get here rather than any particular uh, devotion uh, to the United Kingdom. Um, and I, I think relations with Israel will become worse. Uh, I think that um, Ukraine is another issue where they will probably uh, keep giving them a lot of money, even though it seems that Zelensky is not going to win the war. Uh, and negotiations, uh, I don't think Britain is enough of a factor to directly influence that, but I, I think that will become problematic too. It's not good. I mean, I hope I'm very surprised. Mm. Uh, I want to be very surprised, but... Uh, you know, people are pretty, pretty scared. The Tories are saying that people are so frightened of labor that they may still be able to stay in because at the last minute in the voting booth, people are just going to say, I'm so scared of these guys, I'm still going to vote Tory. Mm. Concerning times ahead, we'll, we'll stay across it with you. Reform UK leader Nigel Farage has emphasised that immigration should be the biggest issue in the upcoming general election. Here he is. If I paid you £70 now, would you admit that this country would be nothing without our rich history of immigration? Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what. And, and this is what's gone wrong. Because you talk about immigration, and it ran from after the war up until the millennium at a net 30 to 40,000 a year. And yes, it worked. In fact, we had the most successful immigration policies of any country in the whole of Europe. No question. Now, it is so totally out of control. Just think about this. Two and a half million people have come in the last two years. You wonder why you can't get a house. You wonder why your rents have gone up 25% in four years. You wonder why our infrastructure is struggling. Uh, you wonder why, uh, you know, we have to build a new house every two minutes just to cope with the numbers. And that's the issue. It's now running at numbers that are literally unimaginable and are diminishing the quality of life of everybody in this country. And frankly, this should be the biggest issue of this election. He makes a lot of sense. Nigel Farage later declared a boycott of the, of the BBC, rather, accusing it of bias after that appearance on Friday night's Question Time. In a post to X, the 60-year-old wrote, I've just been invited to appear, but I'm refusing until the BBC apologises for their dishonest Question Time audience. Our state broadcaster has behaved like a political actor throughout this election. Reform will be campaigning vigorously to abolish the licence fee. Roger, what's your take on, on this? Well, I think the, the news cycle has moved on from that. I think that uh, Nigel, uh, I think the lady is right about immigration. Immigration certainly has helped to build this country, America, many other countries, but uh, a certain amount of immigration. Nigel is right that uh, there's just a pandemonium going on now with illegal immigration, people who aren't processed, people who just come flooding in and can't be dealt with. That's the problem. It's not the question of there's nothing wrong with, uh, there's everything right with immigration. There's nothing wrong with controlled, monitored immigration that's done properly. 
but this has just gone out of hand and I don't think that labor will be able to do much more about it. Now, Nigel boycotting the BBC because of that allegedly rigged audience uh, the other evening, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he's far from the first person to accuse the Beeb of serious bias in all sorts of ways. Uh, but what has moved on in the ni- in the news cycle, Gabriella, is is that um, Nigel has come under fire and reform has come under fire for being a racist party. They were accused uh, with a Channel 4 investigation of a man mm. who uh, called uh, uh, Rishi Sunak a terrible, vile, racist slur and said that immigrants should be used for target practice. And they found all sorts of people uh, you know, who said horrible things. Now, actually, you can find that in any party, uh, and it isn't necessarily a flexion on reform, but the media wave has rather gone against him. And what I'm referring to that is new is that he has announced, uh, announced today, uh, as released in several media outlets, that had he known that was reform was such a shambles, and that people were not vetted as carefully as they should have been, and various other things. Uh, not that he would have thought twice about coming back, but that you know he would have done something about it. He was shocked at the terrible shape the party is in. And so I think that their, uh, their rush of, of voting, uh, their huge uh, momentum has been stopped in the last 24 hours. And I don't expect them to do as well in the election as I did yesterday. I did see those reports. I don't know how I feel about that argument that Nigel Farage is shocked and Reform UK, he didn't realise it was as bad as it was and and that's what he inherited. I think making those claims just so close to the general election, I'm not sure how well that will go down with voters. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, one particular uh, media outlet um, and there may have been others, but that one particular media outlet referred to him as throwing Richard Tice, the man who has uh, led reform the past few years, under a bus. He threw yeah. Richard Tice under a bus. And I, I, I don't understand the strategy of him doing that and distancing himself from the reform party so close, so many hours before the election. I don't get it. I, I really can't understand how that would have benefited either Nigel or reform. And Nigel is not a man who does things unthinkingly. So I, I, I haven't figured it out yet, but it's not good. And I, I don't think it's it's been helpful for reform, all of this uh, bad publicity, even though, as I say, I'm sure every party, I mean, I don't want Green Party people calling me up yelling at me, but I'm sure even the Green Party has people that say horrible things about uh, executives of fossil fuel companies or capitalists or, you know, I mean, every party's got nutters in them and you can't turn around and say that's a racist party, but they, the media has managed because they really do go for Nigel. Uh, they, they have managed to make him a bit of a, a, of a devil and he's fought it off as best he can. But I, I don't understand this capitulation of saying, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was, you know, such a mess yeah. and so bad. I, I Yeah. Roger, I before I let you go, I want to get your take on the U.S. election, the pre- CNN presidential debate. How was Joe Biden? You've heard my opinion. What do you make of it? Um, I've got a lot of people contacting me, asking me, how in the world can his family let him stand up there and, and, and suffer like that and put him through this? Uh, Well, it seems that his family, you know, don't want to lose the fancy dinners at the White House and the rest. And, of course, he's got Barack Obama behind him who wants his fourth term, because as many people acknowledge, this is this is actually Obama's third term right now, and he doesn't want to lose another one. Uh, But Joe Biden is a mess. I mean, he made this statement, as you know, uh, (laughs) that he was tired. He was jet lagged because he had traveled around the world a few times and gone through, quote, it literally said, hundreds of time zones. Well, I mean, he went to Raleigh, North Carolina. He went to Paris. He went somewhere else in Europe. I, I, you know, I didn't see him going to uh, 
Brisbane. I didn't see him going to Seoul <laughs> or uh, I, you know, I mean, he didn't go around the world and he certainly didn't do it several times. And uh, if he crossed a uh, hundred time zones, that was probably in his in his own mind. I mean, he's trying to make excuses. There is no way to kick him out uh, from either office that he holds right now, nominee for the Democratic candidate for president and president of the United States. He's basically, without a lot of difficulty, got to leave that himself. And there are some statements coming out that that's what he's really contemplating doing, but he hasn't gone yet. And his own people are now starting to say, hey man, you gotta go. So I, I, I think, I don't know how the Democrats let this situation develop, it's crazy. Uh, my prediction is that sometime in the next few weeks, uh, he will stand down. I, I mean, I don't think he's going to be the man at the Democratic National Convention. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't see how he could actually could actually run when it actually comes to November 5. Roger Gewob, so great to join, uh, to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.